yeah, well, welcome to the show. I saw the film last night, God vs. Oh, yeah. Aliens. Uh, fascinating topic, for sure. And uh, I guess I should just put like a disclaimer on this episode that, um, you know, a lot of this stuff is theory. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what if it's mm -hmm. trying to draw conclusions from the little evidence that we do yeah. have. But obviously, there's no concrete, solid yeah. evidence that aliens exist, or really that they there's no proof that they don't exist. So mm. it's just a lot of theories right now. So we'll just talk about the what yeah. we know. Um, but yeah. it's your idea what for this film, like what where did this uh, idea come oh, from? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the idea of the film is to talk about the possible issues that might come up if we do get first contact. Uh, as you quite rightly said, there's no hard evidence. Uh, and indeed, Seth Shostak from SETI does state that in the film. Uh, the film is quite balanced in terms of we have all variety of opinions in it, including Seth, who thinks we haven't been visited yet by sentient uh, aliens. Uh, but I, there is a possibility that we could be facing profound, you know, a profound paradigm shift if, you know, the recent whistleblowers uh, in the US uh, Grush and uh, the people, that, the pilots that gave evidence, if what they're saying is proved true and they provide hard evidence, then how will this affect society and how will it affect, you know, religion and spirituality? Uh, because, you know, a lot of people on Earth do have a god or gods and uh, it's helping them deal well, with the possibility that they might may not, you know, be alone in the universe. <laughs> Right. So that's the film I wanted. I wanted to just create a debate, start talking about these issues, so we can get philosophers, religious leaders, get them on board to start, you know, taking it seriously. Because a lot of people are now taking it more serious than it's ever been taken before. Yeah. So you, for your bias of your, you you seem to have more of an open mind, but do you hmm. lean towards the possibility? You think it's more likely that aliens do exist, and that that we are going to come in contact with them soon, or do you lean more like, no, this is all a hoax? Uh, no, I think more now than ever, I think there's too much, uh, there's too many credible people, uh, you know, coming forward with their own stories of seeing unexplained phenomena in the skies, okay, uh, which can't be explained at the moment. Uh, so there's definitely something there. Uh, however, I do put a caveat until, you know, there's this hard evidence, it's, it's hard to... I have an open mind, like you say, but I'm willing to speculate that, yeah, I think there is something visiting us, whether it's extraterrestrial, or whether it's already here, that's another issue. Uh, but I think, you know, it's going to be profound and have a massive impact on society if that is revealed. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about this later because yeah. I want to talk more about the film, but I do want to bring yeah. up just the mm. other possible, the third possibility that there, mm. you know, some of this stuff may be done by the government to try to manipulate people. That's mm -hmm. that's a very real possibility. Again, we don't have any evidence of that. So I'm not saying that's happening, but I'm saying that yeah. is a possibility that the government is doing things. We'll talk later about uh, Project Blue Bean and, and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go back to the film. So mm -hmm. one of the things you bring up is, uh, could aliens be from another dimension? Mm -hmm. Explain the theories on that. Is there any evidence or is this just all uh, hypothetical? It's mostly hypothetical. Uh, I first heard about this theory through uh, an American ufologist, John Keel, uh, who we talk about in the film. He was around in the 50s, 60s, 70s. Uh, he proposed this ultra-terrestrial theory uh, where they're not extraterrestrials as such, but they come from a different dimension. Maybe they're electromagnetic energy, uh, a lot different from us as life, but uh coexisting side by side with us and have been since you know since the earth began uh so they they could be the you know the original uh inhabitants of the earth and we could be a hybrid that's one of the uh theories uh but there is this like multi-dimensional aspect that could be to it as well whereas this phenomena is the reason why it seems so ethereal and things going you know slipping in and out of reality it could be because the you know they're coming from it, overlapping dimensions and things like that as i say it's all speculative at the moment but uh in the way that quantum physics is going as well it's 
it's getting more and more strange reality <laughs> and you have to take into account that mind is playing a part in all of this as well kind of uh, the mind shapes the reality is perceiving uh, yeah have a, you have you followed um the cern stuff at all ce yeah yeah, yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah and they're pushing the limits of what you know what physics where physics physics is going i mean they're about to launch into you know different dimensions which is amazing and that would just change our you know our model of physics uh, and it's it's constantly evolving so i think in 10 years time we'll have a different model of physics which might be able to explain what's happening in terms of ufos other paranormal phenomena we shall see yeah well i have a friend who's who's a christian preacher and he's told me that he believes aliens are fallen angels. And I think you kind of touch on that a little bit in the movie mm. um, when you talk about how different religions would respond to this, mm. if there were, were mm. aliens or uh, mm. UFOs and things. And um, mm. it's interesting too, because there's obviously uh, some controversy with the Christian church and science uh, that you mm. bring up the thing about Galileo mm -hmm. and uh, you know how they denied a lot of the, that's those theories. And yeah. then, I mean, even today, I feel like you see some people that are very, uh, mm -hmm. strong fundamentalists who believe in the flat earth theory because otherwise i don't know if that's partly religious but um i mean they're yeah. still they're bringing that back which i never thought would that would make a comeback no <laughs> it's the one the conspiracy theory you think would never be here but you're right yeah that's a good point uh i think well we do take a look at the old testament and the torah and there's kind of things that point towards these fallen angels maybe the nephilim could be interpreted as extraterrestrial i mean you have to think angels by the very nature are extraterrestrial they're not of this of this world uh so it depends how you interpret it it's but there is like you say this growing movement in mostly in america with evangelical uh wing of christianity and they do see possibly ufos and aliens as you know as, as minions of satan i'm not saying that's the truth and that's the reality but it could i think that's what, what's what could happen uh with certain sectors of religious groups and there's always been this cult aspect as well to to ufos and flying saucers you know you've had cults you know religious cults saying you know the, the second coming's coming and uh, it's going to happen on this day it's going to be ufo and aliens are going to land obviously it never does uh <laughs> But, you know, maybe one day it will. It's going to be massive. But, you know, going on to, say, more mainstream, say the Catholic Church is already preparing for for this and already, you know, has been for quite a while. It's got its own cardinal, uh, Monsignor Balducci, uh, who's in charge of this. Uh, so, but I just wonder when, when do they start saying to their... <laughs> their flock okay there's possibility that you know aliens might be coming soon uh this is what we think this is how it fits into our religion uh we believe this god our god does this uh but it raises the possibility of first contact and you know interacting with alien life does bring about massive you know changes in how we think and see ourselves in the universe and how would it affect our place in it and our gods our goddesses whatever and our spirituality will the aliens bring their own religions own gods uh will they impose them on us these are some of the questions that we you know, raise in the film yeah no it's fascinating you mentioned about the uh catholic church and the you say how the role of the vatican is unclear mm -hmm. um again I just, and i'm not saying this is happening but i'm saying this is a possibility mm -hmm. do you think it's possible that the vatican may already have some evidence of aliens or ufos or or some sort of extraterrestrial interdimensional beings and they're hiding that because the, i mean their track record has been that they've mm. hidden some things from the general public before yeah i mean there is the uh the catch-all of the vatican art secret vatican archive so you can say everything from there from the holy grail to you know uh the the ark of the covenant is in their secret archive but there are you know there is a lot of secrecy around uh the vatican and, and the catholic church so it wouldn't surprise me and i've spoken to an author rob howells who's written extensively on on the vatican and he states that they are keeping a secret of fatima i don't know if you know about the uh the vision that fatima had in portugal there's three children uh peasant children who had a vision of a what we now to see as a ufo 
uh, in the sky in Portugal, but they interpreted it as the Virgin Mary. Uh, and this Virgin Mary stroke UFO, however you want to see it, gave them a message uh, and they wrote, wrote them down. Um, you know, some of them have been released, but apparently one is still kept secret in the Vatican archive. And this author, Rob Howells, is a very credible person. Uh, he states that they're keeping it secret in the archive and it relates to some sort of ap apocalyptic message uh, that will be coming soon true. So that could be linked possibly to to UFOs and what's happening at the moment. Who knows? Yeah, or another possibility could be that they have evidence of aliens or mm. UFOs and it contradicts the religion and so they're hiding yeah. it to keep that from the public right isn't that a possibility as well it's a possibility as well and uh rob howells this author does also state that as well and also they've, they've also got evidence that different story but you know jesus was married had children etc that's kept secret as well because of the same impact it would have on their on their teachings obviously you know it makes a lot of difference yeah <laughs> wait so what sense. is this book called i gotta check this out it's done. It's done quite a few. There's one, the, the best one's called Priory of Sion, S I O N, uh, and it's extensively researched. Uh, and he's done another one called The Last Pope as well, which ties in with this. Uh, Rob Howells, his name is. So yeah, please check okay. it out. I will check that out. And then another interesting topic mm. that you bring up in the film is aliens connecting to art artificial intelligence before they would connect to humans. Now that's really fascinating because that's something that's really taken off in the last few years is the artificial intelligence. And, and, and people are scared of this. I mean, uh, even like Elon yeah. Musk and uh, before he died, I think Stephen Hawking said we need to stop uh, artificial mm. intelligence. It could ruin the world. And so the aliens could potentially somehow contact artificial intelligence or connect into that world. Yeah, it was uh, Professor R.V. Loeb from Harvard University uh, suggested this in the film. Uh, and he, he made the valid point that when we go exploring in the outer reaches of the universe, we will probably send AI probes. So it makes sense that if we are being visited, it's probably going to be aliens sending AI to check us out just because of the large distances involved. Uh, so that makes perfect sense. But yeah, he, you know, then explains the nightmare scenario of their AI basically interacting with our AI and bypassing us completely. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that's the case. It's just a theory put forward. And it is quite of a, has a nightmarish scenario to it. But then there's the other side of it. I'm mean, getting into the realms of science fiction and Terminator here. But, you know, that you could think that some alien life form far reaches of the universe, you know, the universe is 20 odd million, 20 odd billion years old now. Uh, it could be so far advanced that it's moved beyond sentient life and into just ai life so we could the aliens that could be visiting us could just be purely ai uh which also is a little bit scary but i would like to counter that <laughs> is that i don't think we'll ever be replaced by ai uh we you know as humans have soul we have creativity we have consciousness which you know ai i don't think we'll ever get you know just backstory i'm a musician it's my main job and I write songs, you know, and I get inspiration from somewhere. You know, I feel sad one day, got the blues, I'll go out and write a song about it. You know, you try, you try and get an AI program to do the same sort of thing. It, it can copy, it can pastiche it and uh, steal it from somewhere else and re, rejig it a little bit. But it's not going to have that initial inspiration, that creative urge, which comes from being human. Yeah, but I mean, it's crazy what the music that AI can create. I don't know if you heard. Mm -hmm. Uh, AI made a Nirvana song. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, Kurt Cobain passed away mm -hmm. many years ago. Mm -hmm. Somehow they took snippets of other songs and they yeah. created this song and it, yeah, yeah. it's pretty good. Uh, it sounds like a Nirvana yeah. song. And it was like, uh, it's kind of scary that musicians could potentially be replaced by AI. I mean, in a way, I, I don't know. It, it would be like if you heard some of those songs on the radio mixed in with regular yeah, songs. Yeah, yeah, I have. I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a few Beatles things as well, uh, which sound quite impressive. And I think that's that's possibly a thing going forward. It's, it's, it's like nostalgia, essentially. You know, you might as well turn them into holograms and put them in a stadium and sell it out. But is it going to come up with great new uh, music genres, inspiration? Is it going to come up with a great new music i don't think so i think it's good at replicating what's been done before and recreating it in a different way uh but i don't think it's going to ever replace rock and roll for instance 
That's my yeah. opinion anyway. And I've studied it quite a bit. I've done an album. I did an album recently with my band, The Pocket Gods. We did one album in the studio, proper songs. And then we did the same songs and let AI recreate it. And it's no comparison, really. Hmm. Uh, the, uh, you know, the studio one was better, well, in my opinion. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Yeah, hopefully podcasters can't get replaced then either because that's <laughs> a worrisome. Uh, but yeah, yeah so let's talk about another thing you bring up, uh, mm. which is a really fascinating topic too, is simulation theory. Um, mm. Could aliens be in charge of this uh, world? As and it's like a simulation. I had on a, a psychologist, Dr. Donald Hoffman, and we talked. He's extensive uh, research on this and books or a book, and uh, you know he really thinks that there's a simulation going on. It's very likely. Again, it's not hard evidence that 100, percent but. He yeah. feels like it's very likely that we are, in fact, living in a simulation. So that begs the question, who's running the simulation? And you bring up the possibility that it might be aliens. So talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I don't pretend to be an expert on this. I just try to raise this as, a, you know, one of the theories that's around. Uh, I th thought, thought it quite interesting because you could tie in saying aliens could be in charge of the simulation. But then depends how you interpret aliens. It could be God, or the, the creator. You know, you know, it's the same sort of thing, really. Uh, but how how would we ever know? It's like an episode of the Twilight Zone. We're not gonna, <laughs> we're not going to know we're in it, or the Truman Show, unless unless there's glitches, which you could say paranormal phenomena, maybe UFOs are sort of glitches in in this simulation theory. I I don't know. I mean, it's 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 a fascinating uh, concept, slightly scary. But that's does that make life predetermined? It's free. We don't have free will. It's, it's someone else's free will. The creator, the aliens. I mean, yeah. is this a, all a reality show? Well, that would or be they, interesting. Yeah, because I mean, it could be a thing where, like, when you die, you wake up and you you take off the headset and you're oh okay now I'm in the real world. Like yeah, it's a bit like the maybe, Matrix, I guess. Yeah, yeah, maybe really you live like you know hundreds of years, and uh, or this is just a short. This could be yeah. like. A, it could be 30 minutes in that world, but it's like, you know, it's, a, it's yeah. a years here. I mean, yeah. I mean, a strange thing happened to me the, the, a few few months ago. It was I I made a previous film. It's three hours long on my band. Okay. So I, I was editing it at the time. I knew it every sec second of the film. And basically I went to bed, had a dream, and I replayed the whole of my film in my dream all three hours long. Okay. And I woke up and 10 minutes had passed. I mean, so how do you explain that? But I know I, you know, I lived every every moment of that film. It's three hours long. But I only slept for ten minutes. So there's yeah. something strange going on, and, and people who have psychic moments, synchronicities, things like that, that could be maybe proof of the simulation theory as well. That was, it's like glitches in the matrix, I guess. Well, exactly. And then, I mean, you're in a band, so you've probably done some drugs. Like, have you ever had the psychedelic experiences? Have you ever done like mushrooms or acid or DMT? Because like the people that have done that stuff, I mean. It's like a different level. Yeah, I mean, it seems quite fascinating. I haven't done any of that. Uh, I did some mushrooms when I was at university, uh, and that was that was quite interesting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I've heard lots of stories, lots of musicians that have taken it, and uh, it's opened up other worlds. And I'm a big fan of Graham Han Hancock, uh, Hancock, the archaeologist, and he's a big believer in it, and it's helped open his mind to explore different theories about reality and history and things like that. So especially DMT, I think. But yeah, I mean, that may help us connect either with uh, global consciousness. I mean, this is the other thing as well. With consciousness, science still can't explain what it is, or how it works. You know, they still think it's in the brain. It's some sort of process in the brain. Whereas more and more evidence now that it's not, it's actually out there. It's like a mental internet. And more and more serious scientists talking about this now. Uh, and it's like, you know, what I want to know is how how do we, tap into this mental internet so that we can all use it for good really uh, and i think synchronicities being aware of those that when they happen is is kind of tapping into that a little bit as well yeah well i think we just get glimpses of it like i said mm. i mean drugs is just one way but also mm. hypnosis and mm. meditation meditation yeah absolutely yeah. yeah yeah there's all sorts of different uh things and then again if the with like cern and stuff maybe they're going to be able to map it out and figure it out scientifically which would be yeah. amazing Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's an exciting time, really, because you've got what CERN's doing, you've got quantum physics, you've got consciousness, you've got all these different things going on with UFOs and possibly first contact and disclosure. 
it's it's a great time to be around and try and work these things out. And that's what I've done this film for, really, is to create a debate uh, and see what happens, really. Yeah. So, I mean, like with in here in America, I think that probably the number one religion is Christianity. So if like let's let's discuss that a little bit more. If, if aliens hmm. do come show up, hey, we're here. Um, hmm. you know, some people are going to say again, like we said earlier, it's fallen hmm. angels. It's hmm. a sign of the apocalypse. Hmm. But then there is another camp that might say, hey, aliens are God's creatures, too. Hmm. Like, it would be an interesting split. Like, what do you think? Do you think it would be kind of 50 50? Or do you think, uh, or just like with uh, not even re with religion, like, how would most Americans or people in the UK or most humans, how are we going to react to aliens? Are we going to be scared? Uh, yeah, I, th I think so. Uh, I do. I'm a little bit kind of thinking, well, we've become maybe we've been conditioned to possibly possibility of life out there through popular culture over the last 50 years you know and some people say that even steven spielberg's been kind of prompted by you know cia to put certain ufo alien references in his films so that when it comes to you know the big reveal okay well yeah I think we can handle that so it's that side of it but i think it comes to religion I think you're right. There'll be a, there'll be two camps. There'll be the kind of the evangelical fundamental types who are quite believe in the literal word of the Bible. Uh, I think they'll find it very difficult. Uh, whereas more kind of open minded. I'm not denigrating evangelicals. I'm just saying, but more kind of open, spiritually open minded Christians, which I I call myself one. Uh, I think we're open to the possibility of God having created other life elsewhere and being part of the same. You know, we we are part, you know, part of God's world, and I don't see a problem with that. Uh, we do speak to a, a practicing priest, Church of England, uh, in the film, and he doesn't have a problem with it. He sees it all as all part of God's creation. Uh, but you know, it's it's what we think is how. What do the aliens think? At the end of the day, we can say how we feel, but if they come here and, you know. Uh, quite dogmatic and okay there is no god we've proved it we're far more advanced than you are are they going to impose that on on us in a kind of re reverse colonialism you know because we're in the past especially the british empire and the spanish empire went out into the world and christianized south america large parts of africa uh would well, the aliens do the same here well you know it brings up an interesting uh concept because there's a lot of people i mean there's a lot of debate about everything now in america like everything is i mean we had the covid vaccine and people were like mm. yes you mm. need to take it and other people said no you shouldn't mm. i mean they just literally debate everything so you, what if the mm. aliens came here and they said look yeah. we have proof that there is no god or we are the gods or you know we have scientific we will show you the evidence of how the world was mm. created i feel like there's still going to be people that won't believe yeah. it they'll, they'll what they'll say the, the evangelical yeah the evangelical especially will say it's a test of faith that's the hell they'll answer it you know it's a test of our faith. We've got to get through this. You know, this is false prophets, whatever you want to call them, fallen angels, uh, here to tempt us, to, to take us away from God's path. But that's that's possibly what will happen. Uh, I do think the Catholic Church, especially, uh, will be expedient because it wants to stay in power. So it will it will find a way of encompassing alien life forms into its church. <laughs> I guarantee it. That's I interesting. Yeah. And I also, yeah. it's interesting you bring up the movies and the films and stuff, because I feel like most of the films and, and TV things, it's always aliens are the bad guys. It's, I mean, yeah, mm. there's like ET and there's a few, or, mm. you know, it's they're happy, fun mm. aliens, but usually it's like we're, we're shooting them with guns and lasers and mm. machine guns and trying to kill the aliens because they're trying to kill us. Yeah. So that would be interesting. Are these going to be nice aliens? Or are they going to, because mm. a lot of the stories you hear too, um, like mm. I had this author on uh, Ryan Sprague, he wrote a whole book of yeah. aliens. Yeah. encounters and things mm -hmm. and a lot of them are not nice a lot of them are very scary and uh you know it's uh, again these are all just encounters i don't know if people are hallucinating mm -hmm. or on drugs or whatever when they see these things um mm -hmm. but there's stories of people that say they've been abducted or had an encounter with an alien it's and it's usually not pleasant from what i can tell no but i think there is also an agenda from from the u.s government military or whoever's controlling this to put that out really that they're going to be a threat because they want to be able to control the narrative the fact that you know they can rearm 
spend money on you know weapons and things like that they like doing that so it's in their interest to to frame it like that i mean there's no evidence i mean to say they i mean apart from people's testimony of being abducted and things like that which does vary i have to say uh some people claim to have encounters which are enlightening uh there's no way of knowing and there's also people say well there's not just one uh, race of aliens there's lots yeah. some of them are not so nice and some of them are here to help us and there's a there's a kind of battle going on and that kind of we allude to that in the film a little bit in the ancient indian hindu texts which talk about these battles uh in the sky between various factions and that could be interpreted as as alien battles over, over earth so the same thing could be going on now uh but then you've also got people like i don't think you've heard dr stephen greer He's the other extreme. He thinks they're all friendly and lovey-dovey and here to help us and raise our consciousness. Um, we can contact these aliens by just by using our minds, our consciousness. Uh, I, I like that, but I don't know if it's true. I kind of want it to be nice and uh, happy. And Yeah. Well, and then talk about some of the other religions besides Christianity, because obviously there's tons of religions, Muslims, believe in one god so they um they would again think probably aliens are creations of allah but what about um one of the, some of the religions you don't mention in the film which i was curious about was like latter-day saints because i know they have something about like if you die you go to a planet so do they have beliefs on aliens and, and also what about scientology because i feel like that's another religion that it seems like that was uh made well, by a guy who wrote a science yeah, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not an expert but i think scientology is a science fiction kind of religion by Ron Hubbard, wasn't it really? He's written lots of science fiction novels uh, and he's created this church. And yeah, it's a fascinating, uh, fascinating subject. I don't, I'm not an expert, so I can't comment on it. The Latter day Saints, is that the Mormon church? Is, right. Yeah. I was just trying yeah. to, I think they yeah. prefer to be called Latter day Saints. Yeah. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But that was founded by, uh, was it Joseph? I can't remember his Joseph name. Smith? That's a Smith, that was it. And he that's, that's all quite science fiction as well. The way it started, he got he got visitation and then got messages and drew them out. And so that could say that the beginnings of that religion were extraterrestrial in origin. Uh I don't know. I can't comment on on you know what happens to, to them after they die. Um but it does seem that the religions have their own kind of exclusive heaven or afterlife where only true believers go um whereas I, i'm more open-minded i think you know the, the, the i think there is a god uh, and i think consciousness survives after death but we all go to the same place christian muslim jewish uh hindus whatever uh, so do but you believe back. in a heaven or what would you what would you call that place oh uh, yeah i don't i yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I do. I I think it more in states of uh, consciousness, enlightenment, uh, and you kind of create your own hell by doing bad things, <laughs> and you know you pay the consequences of that in terms of where you go next. It, it's more of a reinc not reincarnation, but more of a, a Hindu Buddhist kind of thing that I believe in. I think. As opposed to good people go to heaven and only if you're true believers uh, go and line up and get in and then only evil people go to hell. And it's I, I don't believe it's that rigid. Yeah, well, mm. it'd be, I guess we'll all find out someday, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not too soon. But yeah. yeah. Well, so going I wanted to ask you about this and I don't know if you uh, know a lot about it, but like so the, recently there's been definitely some alien UFO news here in the united states uh this guy david grush who was yeah. a united states air force officer former intelligence uh, official was uh mm. he was interviewed at the cia congressional hearings mm. and he says that uh he believes that the u.s federal government maintains a secretive ufo recovery mm. program and is in possession of non-human spacecraft uh, along with the dead pilots and he's a, like mm. a whistleblower mm. uh, and he filed a complaint against the uh uh, mm -hmm. And then he said that the, the, they uh, they retaliated over his complaint. And mm -hmm. so this is just one guy saying mm -hmm. this. I don't know. He mm -hmm. could be totally full of it. 
or the, there's a lot of people that conspiracy theorists that say, oh, the government is like is putting them up to this. This is all part mm. of a psyop. What is your take on that whole situation? Uh, my take on it, uh, I think I think he's genuine. I think he's got a lot to lose by testifying under oath in the U.S. Congress that he's experienced these things. And he brought also brought with him two very experienced former pilots, uh, Fravor and uh, Graves, I think the names are, who also testified at the same hearing. And, and they both gave evidence as well under oath saying, you know, they engaged with these craft that, you know, doing maneuvers, which, uh, you know, nothing human can do, basically. Uh, so I, I think this, these are the most credible people we've ever had come forward and give their testimonies under oath. And they say they know, I think Gresh has said, he knows where the craft are, the bodies, et cetera, and he's going to provide the details in a, you know, off off the record not on the on the record but not in public view because obviously he's still got his uh security uh clearance and things like that so but i think he's very very genuine uh, but the, i mean even today i've just seen in the news that's come out they've they've leaked someone from the uh, dod's leaked uh Gresh's medical records to try and discredit him uh saying that he's got mental health issues but i mean the guy served in afghanistan come back with PTSD, like a lot of soldiers and service people do, uh, understandably. Uh, and they're trying to use that to discredit him, uh, which I think is a pretty low tactic, but just shows possibly how desperate it's getting. And everyone predicted that this, this would happen. As soon as he came forward, gave evidence under oath that possibly, you know, the next bit would be to try and discredit him as a person. So it negates his evidence. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's really fat. I mean, if if what he again, this is all speculative because just it's his word versus the mm -hmm. government's. But he claims to have viewed documents that report that Mussolini's government recovered yeah. non-human spacecraft in 1933, which yeah. the Vatican again. We go back to the Vatican mm -hmm. and Five mm -hmm. Eyes assisted the U.S. in procuring in 1944-1945, and he has second bit, knowledge yeah. that American citizens have been harmed and killed killed as part of the government's effort to cover up the information. So do you know about this? And like, I had to Google, I didn't, I wasn't sure what five eyes is. I guess it's like some sort of a, a government. It's like five different countries kind of like basically. Yeah. Try, trying to keep it all secret. I mean, as you say, this is all speculative. I've never heard about the uh, Sicily crash and Mussolini until he said it. Uh, there's, there's not much evidence out there. Uh, there is a few documents on the internet, but how, how credible they are. I don't know. But usually people talk about the first crash crash being Roswell. But, the, you know, he's gone back even further saying it was before the Second World War. Uh, so I don't know. Part of me thinks, yeah, maybe he's been fed information and he's, he's putting out this because he's been told this. I don't know. I mean, it's the old uh, Fox Mulder things I, I kind of want to believe. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, will we ever get to the truth, I guess? I, if the US government is is covering this up in terms of it's a secret military program, which you possibly mentioned earlier, and there's some technology they don't want anyone else to know about, then they're not going to come out and say that. You know, there's no UFOs. Yeah. It's this. Well, there's definitely <laughs> something going Have you heard? So there's two. Uh, I, I was Googling Project Blue Beam, which I'll get to in a minute. But yeah, yeah. as I was looking at that, there was another one called Project Blue Book that I had never heard of. And, and I guess this was a thing where they collected mm. all these uh, UFO reports. Mm. They collected 12, over 12,000 UFO reports. And yeah. most of them were uh, classified as uh, just, you know, like natural weather phenomena clouds, yeah. stars mm. things like that but they is they said 701 reports were classified mm. as unexplained even mm. after stringent analysis yeah. so that leads yeah. me to believe that even the government doesn't mm. know some of some of the stuff they can't explain it no absolutely and the thing is project blue book years later i think it's dr alan hynek who was in charge of it later admitted that yeah a lot of them they just wanted to get rid of basically to stop people talking about them so they use natural weather phenomena and things like that because there's some very credible cases that still can't be explained now there's one by a policeman called Lonnie Zamora who saw a sort of egg-shaped craft land uh, and he's a very very credible witness he was a law enforcement officer and you know did sworn testimony he's been under polygraph 
was telling the truth, but that was just, you know, that was one of the ones that was left unexplained. But a lot of the others were, like you say, natural phenomena, but there was a high percentage that were just written off as that because, you know, they that was their mission. The mission was to not, is to disprove the UFO phenomena as, as you know, as made up really. So, so why do you think that it, it, now they're kind of acknowledging or somebody, people, some people are saying that, that they may be real. Like, do you think this is all like, they're kind of prepping us to, for the big reveal? Yeah, I think so. And that's why they want to control the agenda in terms of making it out as a threat. Uh, Cause then they can control it. If people are scared and there's a fear for, well, could we let the military deal with it? <laughs> uh, you know, so that, that's, that's an issue. I mean, my issue is, you know, being from the UK, this is not just a US phenomena. It's a worldwide phenomena, as far as I'm aware. In Peru at the moment, in South America, there's a lot of sightings there, uh, a lot of credible sightings. Uh, there's lots in Russia. I know uh, the Russian military have been engaging with UFOs. There's a journalist, a filmmaker called Jeremy Corbell. Uh, him and George Knapp have got documents from from the Russians that state that they've been having the same experiences as, as the uh, American uh, pilots that have seen stuff. So I, I, I firmly believe there's something there in the skies that's not explained. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that it's not our technology. Uh, I can't say definitely whether it's extraterrestrial, uh, but I don't think it's just misidentification. These are very high, highly trained pilots. They've seen everything in the sky. They would know if it, if it was a balloon or a weather phenomena. Uh, so I think that's what's different this time. There's three people that have come forward, like you said, David Grush and the two pilots, Graves and Fravor, very, very credible witnesses. And what we see now is an attempt to discredit them because maybe they want to slow down the process of revealing the big truth because it's a bit out of control at the moment. Uh, that's what it seems to me. Yeah, well, then I don't know if you saw this one. Uh, this was very recent, just a couple of days ago. A Harvard researcher, Professor Avi Loeb, yeah. Uh, analyzing the, the composition mm -hmm. of these molten droplets that mm -hmm. fell off this mm -hmm. object that mm -hmm. was exposed to the fireball that it created as it moved yeah. through the air. They're getting some very interesting results. They cannot mm -hmm. detail them until they put them together in a paper, a scientific paper that they hope to make publicly available to everyone within a month or so. And then oh, when nice. it, if it was like, oh, maybe this is a typical meteorite, they said uh, they're exploring the possibility of propulsion. And so it's like, it sounds like they're leaning towards they have some sort of thing yeah. that's very that's like a new yeah. phenomenon. i mean yeah rv Loeb is actually in in the film and he talks about him going on this expedition to find this meteorite it's in the shores of papua new guinea i think it is uh because it came it's an extra it's out of this uh solar system it's come from a long long way away and it's tracked it and it fell in papua new guinea in the oceans and he's just been there recently to collect these spherules and testing them and there's a good like a good shot that is going to be uh proof of alien technology because what it was looking for signs of man manufacture not uh just being a natural rock which he possibly has found which does kind of blow your mind a bit <laughs> yeah I'm i mean can't wait for the results of that paper no. so um, yeah, and then lastly, I did want to talk about this, uh, the Project mm. Blue Beam, which mm. is kind of controversial from what I could see. I, I could mm. not find, actually, surprisingly, I can't find a lot about this. Some right. people say, oh, this is written from, this is ripped off from a science fiction novel, and other mm. people say it's fact. And uh, so we don't, again, we don't know. I don't want to claim, mm. I don't want to get a flag for false information, but mm. this is just a conspiracy theory, rumor, call it whatever you want. But there's a rumor technology that uh, the government has the ability to project a 300 yard Buddha, Muhammad, mm -hmm. or Jesus, or UFO into the sky, mm -hmm. and that they could basically stage the government could stage an alien attack or an alien invasion, or they could make mm -hmm. a giant Jesus and, and do all these things through a hologram, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then they could, I guess, it's like a four step thing. One, they wanted they would destroy religion, two, mm -hmm. they would use the holograms and the fake UFOs and claim demonic possessions. And then they would do uh, telepathic electronic two-way communication and the, these supernatural manifestations through electronics. So some of the technology, I don't even know if it's uh, there, but what is your take on that whole project? Yeah, I, I have heard of it. I don't know too much about it, but I know it's been used. Uh, 
somewhere i can't remember where it was but somewhere in scandinavia where they there was a projection in the sky of a ufo that turned out to be a hologram and people were saying that's related to project Bluebeam. as you say there's not a massive amount on it but it wouldn't surprise me and that could possibly answer some of the questions uh, regarding some of these sightings but then if it's a top secret project that's going to be used by say the u.s military they're not going to reveal that <laughs> They'd rather keep up the false and UFO narrative than reveal, oh, we've got this great new weapon, uh, this new technology which we can use to, you know, they're not going to say it, not for another 20, 30 years. Well, eventually they would, they, I think they yeah. would use it and then use it to, mm. I mean, that's the theory. Again, mm. this is all mm. just a theory. We don't have mm. facts, but it would be a, a one world government, one world currency and a one world control grid. So like the all the countries would get together and mm. use, they would, maybe they would use different holograms of the different gods, or they would all yeah. be an alien or whatever it was. And mm. then they could use that to control people because people would be very, I mean, that would be very concerning if a giant alien or, or Jesus shows up. I mean, you or a giant or a giant Bill Gates, as people might put up there. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's, uh, it might be, <laughs> if he was going to pick what it was going to be, I think it would probably be a giant him. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it seems a bit far fetched to me. But then again, it makes for a good film, I think. Yeah. Or what about, um, are you familiar with the zero point energy theory, how there's invisible energy waves and, and the quantum waves connect us all together? I think that's kind of like a global consciousness. Mm. Yeah, I like that. I mean, that that could be good. But yeah, I, I still think there's, I, I mean, my, the next thing I'm working on is a film called Searching for the Divine, which is trying to find the meaning of it all, really. What is God? What is life? What is consciousness? What are UFOs? What are the paranormal? What is the paranormal? Tying it in with quantum physics. Uh, so that's my next mission. It's on a quest. You've got to have a quest in life, I think. So that's my okay. quest. Uh, is to try and find a grand theory of, of all these things and tie it together. Because I'm sure it's all related. But I might just come back to the simulation theory. <laughs> Well, I was, this is a time when I'm going to, I'm going to give my dad's book a shout out. It's right behind me here. It's called ultimate reality. I would definitely, oh, well. if you're looking for the answers of like, what does it all mean? Like, what is yeah. it? Everything? Where do we, where do we go when we die? All that. I would definitely check that book out. My I dad will definitely book. check that out. That's brilliant. It's got almost 500 resources in it. So it's all cited. Wow. Not, I mean, it's theories, but it's theories of scientists and, and everything mm. is uh, cited in there. So it's not just a bunch of mm. uh, garbled junk i mean this is like my dad did all the research took him several years so i would definitely check that out Brilliant. um people should also check out your uh music the pocket gods that's still yeah. active right yeah we're actually working on an album at the moment called songs for first contact uh so we're going to make this album i've actually got jeremy corbell involved uh wow yeah 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 so... <laughs> yeah because that guy is big in the ufo I know. He's been on rogan a few times i think right yeah, and he was there at the hearings in Congress. He, he I tried actually, to get him on the show. I, I guess I uh, he doesn't return can, my calls, but I can message him for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. That'd be amazing. Yeah, you should get on Rogan too. Like you, with this new film, have you tried to reach out to Rogan? I don't know actually because I had a not a bit of a run in, but uh, my band did an album of a thousand songs, all thirty seconds long, uh, to moan it about. Well, to highlight the rub rubbish royalties from Spotify and other streaming services okay 30 seconds long because they pay out a royalty after 30 seconds so i put a thousand of them on okay oh i heard uh, about that that yeah, was yeah, were yeah. you the first guys to do that because i yeah, yeah, yeah. The story okay i didn't realize <laughs> yeah. that was you that's me yeah so we did that which is good fun really really hard to do uh but it was at the time that spotify uh acquired joe rogan podcast so i made the point that oh, okay spotify should be paying money to musicians that help make spotify you know the great thing it is uh but i wasn't knocking uh joe rogan because when it got a lot of publicity they were saying oh you know what what do you think about joe rogan? i said it's fine because the people musicians were trying to ban him at the time because he was having so-called anti-vaxxers on his show and i'm all for free speech uh so i didn't want to ban his show so thanks joe wherever you are <laughs> Well, yeah, let's, so let's get you on Rogan. Let's get yeah. Jeremy Corbell on my show. It'll be a win-win for nice. everybody. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> All right. And then I always end promoting a charity or a nonprofit. Is there a charity that you uh, want to promote here at the end if people have some money left over after they buy all the Pocket God albums? 
Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Yeah, there's a charity I support uh, locally. I live in St Albans uh, in Hertfordshire in England, uh, and it's called St Albans Action for Homeless. Because uh, although we we live, uh, our town's not far from London. There's a big homeless problem. Properties are very very expensive, and uh, we shouldn't have anyone homeless in today's age. So I like to support the local homeless charity, St Albans Action for Homeless. Okay, I'll put that in the show notes along with, uh, I think you have a website for Pocket Gods or, or your own personal yeah. website? Okay. It's the thepocketgods.com. And then where can people find this film? Because is it out yet or is it not? Because I got the screener copy, so. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting its UK broadcast on uh, on Sky TV, AOSAT TV, but you'll be able to find it online on most streaming platforms, starting with Amazon Prime in the next week. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mark, and uh, good luck Thanks, with everything. Chuck. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Awesome. See you. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the full podcast episode. Please help support our guests by following them on social media and purchasing their products, whether it be a book, album, film, or other thing. And if you have a few extra dollars, please consider donating it to their favorite charity. If you want to support the show, you can like, share, and comment on this episode on social media and YouTube. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can give us a rating or review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts. Finally, make sure you're subscribed to the show on YouTube for the video versions and other exclusive content. We appreciate your support. Have a great rest of your day and shoot for the moon.